So yesterday, NATO had their Vilnius summit to discuss what further actions they're going to take concerning Russia and how they're going to figure out a way to incorporate Ukraine into NATO. And once again, Ukraine was disappointed uh, with NATO, but... You know, and I went and looked at all these articles uh, yesterday, but I saw one, got my attention in a different way, and I want to talk about it. Um, I hit the wrong button here. Here we go. All right, and this would be on uh, War News 24-7 once again. Uh, some of this is, is deceptive. I'll get into that in a second, too. Colossal increase in NATO forces for conflict with Russia. No, there's no colossal increase. This, this, this NATO force of, th there was 300,000. They may have increased it by 100,000 um, soldiers on standby. That, that 300,000 has been for quite a while. It, in fact, you can look it up and you will find that... Um, there was an article back in June of 2022 about the 300,000. So this is kind of deceptive. Three new defensive plans. That's incorrect as well. This three defensive plans have always been in place since almost the beginning of NATO. But the areas that they cover got my attention. It, for a military mind, they, a military mind would already know this, but I'm not a military man. I don't, don't have a military mind. It's new to me. And most of you don't have a military mind, so it would be new to you as well. So I want to share it with you. Now, this is false. For the first time since World War II, NATO is adopting new defense plans to be implemented in the event of war with Russia. They have had defense plans since the beginning of NATO in the event of war with Russia. That is not new. Okay? They're trying to get clicks here is what's happening. The new defense plan covers five to six areas, and to be implemented, it will be necessary to revise all existing NATO structures. What NATO structures? Well, NATO is divided into three. I did not know this. Okay, so I want to share this with you. And the reason why I want to share it with you, what got my attention was the first plan covers the high north, and the Atlantic. Now, it's interesting the way that they um, <sighs> translated this from Russian or Ukrainian. But I believe I know what this means. The high north, now, one thing I wanted to mention is that Turkey finally agreed to allow Sweden to join NATO. So the high north would be now Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Okay? The far north. Remember, the kingdom of Sweden claims that they are the the descendants of the people of Gog and Magog. That's what they say. All right? And I mentioned several times in several videos, do not automatically assume that Russia is, Rashi might be, but don't automatically assume, do not Try to set your narrative in concrete. Do not automatically assume that Russia is 
exclusively. Because as I pointed out in Ezekiel 38, peoples that are mentioned will go there. Are Gomer. Gomer is the vast majority of Europe now. Gomer had three sons. One is Ripheth. Ripheth, as I understand, are the... Wait a minute. They are partly the Irish, but the Gauls... Um, the Gauls... Well, they're all of Gomer, okay. So, but Ashkenaz is a son of Gomer as well. So you have Ashkenaz, Ripheth, and I believe Togarma is the son of Gomer as well. So this includes, by and large, all of Europe. You see? So what I'm saying is, do not automatically assume that Europe will not be involved because if you read in, where is it? Is it Revelation 13? Or is it... Yes. So, the Ten Kingdoms, and we have discussed what they are, who they are, of Europe... These shall make war with the Lamb. How, where will they make war with the land? In the land of Israel. Why? Why will they do this? You will find that in... Um, it's... Um, I believe Revelation... 11 or 12? 12, 12. Revelation 12. You will find the reason why they will do this. And I'm not going to be here to argue with any of you about who this woman is. The woman uh, that was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet with a crown of 12 stars is not Europe. It is Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. This woman has been persecuted by the dragon's people in Europe and in Russia and among the Muslims for nearly 2,000 years or actually more than 2,000 years. And then finally, the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. This is the regathering of all Israel as Paul spoke of in Romans 11 and verse 26, that she might fly to the wilderness into her home place. What is her home place? The land of Israel. Because the promises are written in Isaiah 60, Isaiah 46, 45. Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah 30, they're all talk about bringing Israel back home. Ezekiel um, 38 talks about this. She's going to fly. Fly on what? According to Isaiah 60 and verse 8 on the ships of Tarshish first. Flying on ships. Ships with wings. Ships with jet engines on them. The
cruise liner is a ship in the water, and airliner is a ship on the air. Okay, to make it simple for you. Back to her place where she is nourished for, where she is nourished there. Doesn't say where she is nourished for a time right here. It says where she is nourished there. For a season and a half from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water like a flood. This is the army. So why are these people coming to attack, fight against, I should say, the Messiah? It's because he sent the two witnesses to regather in all Israel, as you can read in the previous chapter of Revelation 11. Actually, uh, yes, in chapter 11. So this earth helps the woman, this great earthquake of Ezekiel 38. If you care to read it, the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed up the flood and the dragon that the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the women and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of not Gaut or Gautaz, a false idol, but of Jehovah, and not the testimony of Jesus Krios, but the testimony of Yehoshua HaMoshiach. Big difference. Who are these that keep the commandments of Jehovah and have that testimony? They are the two witnesses in the previous chapter. You see, they will be responsible for gathering all Israel in. They are going to bring all sorts of plagues upon the earth, and it's going to cause Europe and possibly Russia to stop the war that they are doing somehow, some way, sometime. They might have already launched nukes at each other. But these two witnesses rise up and there is no rain upon the earth that he bring all sorts of plagues upon the earth to the point where all the Gentiles are united against Yehoshua HaMoshiach. That's right. So what I'm saying is, you've heard your narratives Okay, <clears throat> but remember this. NATO countries are going to come to fight against Yehoshua, not just Russia. Okay, so what I want to do is the high north and the Atlantic. That would be Canada, the U.S., Great Britain, Sweden, um, what is it, Sweden, Norway, and Finland. That's the first group. The second group is, uh, this is, would be the first group, and the, the joint command is of Norfolk, uh, is under Norfolk. Okay. Then there is the Allied Joint Force Command, Brunson. 
So its headquarters is at Brunsum, the Netherlands. Who are, what is that group? That group is, uh, I believe it is the, hold on, Alps. It would be the Alps and, and the Baltic region. So that would be all the way from France through the Alps into the Baltic region. The Baltics, let's look it up. Um, I'm done with this. That would be, I can say it off the top of my head, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, all those areas, probably including Romania. Um, you get the gist. All right. Then the last one is Naples. Does that sound familiar, folks? This covers Rome. Now, don't jump to conclusions, folks. Just bear all this in mind, okay? This would be Southern Europe, I believe. It's, um, it's based in the metropolitan city of Naples, which is not far from Rome. All right. Originally, it was Southern Europe, and it was uh, one of two major NATO commands in the Mediterranean area. Um, I guess that would cover Turkey, Greece. Is it Greece? I don't know. I'm not sure if Greece. Yeah, Greece. Yes, Greece would be a member of NATO. And even, right, Italy, Turkey, Greece, etc. All right. But all of these countries are going to be, I'm, what I'm saying is what I'm suggesting to you. Why is this in my... All right. What I am suggesting to you is there might even be nukes launched initially. It could be low-yield tactical nukes. And just as the world is starting to get completely out of control, here come the two witnesses. I'm not claiming that I know. I'm just saying. That is a very good possibility. And I know some of you think it is not possible for Russia and NATO nations to ally with each other. They're Christians. They will ally with each other. There are hatred and the Muslim nations like Persia. They will ally with them too. Why? The one thing that is greater than their own religious beliefs is their hatred of Israel and Israel's Moshiach, whom they call the Antichrist, or whom the Muslims call Dajjal. They will unite together against him, against the restoration of all Israel. But you see, it's written in your scriptures, O Gentile. It is written in Romans 11, um, let's see here. We'll go to Romans here.
so Paul is chastising the Roman church. Warning them that they are wrong-headed. He is telling them that Jehovah has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. If he were to have to tell them that, it's because that's actually what they believed. He says, no, that's not true. That's false. But did the Roman church listen to Paul? No, they did not. How do I know this? Just take a look. Just look at the past between now and the days of Paul. Look at the actions of the Roman church, what they did to Israel. They didn't listen to Paul. And so, he said this, I would not, brethren, Romans, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That partial blindness happened to Israel until the filling up the hourglass fills up for the Gentiles. In other words, your time is up. And so all Israel shall be saved. That is when that woman with the crown of 12 stars, the real Israel, not the fake one, the, not the fake one, which is European Union, but the real one, which is the children of Jacob. They will be saved. Will it be some of them? It says every one of Israel will be saved. As it is written, there will come out of Zion the deliverer who shall turn away unrighteousness from Jacob. From the children of Jacob. Because this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. They may be enemies for the good news sakes. But they are the elect. They are the elect for and beloved for the patriarch's sake. So we will go and see where Paul found that. And it is Isaiah 46. I think it's 45, maybe. 45, is it 45 or 46? 46, no, 45. Forty-four. I might have to go Google it. There it is. This is not the one, but I'll read this to you, and then I'll find the the I'll find it. Listen, Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Jehovah says. He made you and formed you from the womb. He will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant. Yeshurun, Yeshurun, upright one, whom I have chosen. Okay? And he's going to do all of this for Israel. All right. Israel, my elect. Mine elect. Oh, that's right there in 45. Okay. Verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have called you by your name. I have surnamed you to know me. Okay. And... King James even says it like this, even though you have not known me. It doesn't matter. After, when the time of the Gentiles comes to the end, 
all Israel shall be saved. And the two witnesses are going to do that great work. That is the reason why all of the Gentile nations will come together against the two witnesses to kill them, and then they will join up together to try to overthrow the Moshiach in the land of Israel. And they will be destroyed. That's all I'm going to do for today. I want everyone who's listening to this to let that marinate in your mind. 